everyone welcome or welcome back to my channel it feels like it's been such a long time but today we're gonna do another walkthrough of my watercolor painting this is the one that i did for my patreon video last month so if you want to see the full walkthrough for it including the line work and the full list of colors my patreon link will be up in the description for this one, I wanted to show you guys just how I achieve the proper values with watercolors by working them in multiple layers. And I also wanted to demonstrate how, how differently colors look on top of each other versus if it was just the same color layered after itself. So the supplies I used for this one are my Daniel Smith watercolors. I also used some of my Princeton brushes and for my paper, I used my Strathmore Ready Cut watercolor paper. This one is amazing. Um, it's pure cotton and it's actually cold pressed, even though I don't think it looks that way. And I think it's because for this painting, I painted on the wrong side. So yeah, when I start painting, these first layers are all just going to be with the warmest colors in my palette. Even though for the look of it, I actually want it to be... A mixture of very cool dark colors and very warm lighter colors. What I'm doing is for this first one I want to cover almost the whole thing with the warmest colors that I have and since I wanted this painting to be very saturated I'm almost completely covering the whole thing. The only parts of the painting that I'm leaving out are the ones with the brightest highlights and also the ones that I want to leave just white in the painting. So maybe some of the highlights on her hands and some parts of the folds of her shirt. But everything else is saturated in this very warm color. You can almost see, even though I started with almost that blank slate for the first layer, for the background and her hair, I used a more intense color, which is New Gamboge. This one's just a little bit darker in value. And also I need this very warm colors under the cooler colors on top of it to really add depth to those layers after. And after that, what I'm gonna do is add these very intense reddish oranges to shape out the features of her face. I find it to be really fascinating, especially right at the very tip of her nose. I've added some of my warmest reds for them, just so even though I am working in just one layer, it would already look like there's a little bit of dimension to it. There's also parts of the shadows where I would add a little bit of green and sometimes I would just add in some blue to my warmer colors but still the point of this layer is to just make her features more dimensional but still keeping them within this very warm color family and I really wanted these shadows to be super intense because the great thing about watercolors is that you know that these colors are gonna look great on top of each other so even when you're just painting with well, essentially the mid-tones and the highlights of the piece you know that it would add more to the overall color palette once once it's layered with different colors on top and so aside from choosing which colors would go first in the order that i wanted them to be in the painting it was also very important for me to keep the shapes that the shadows are casting on her face because it personally I think it's one of the best features of the photo and so I really wanted to capture the shapes that the shadows are making on her face. So you can see these colors on her cheeks and her neck are very intense. These are my brightest reds and oranges and I just really wanted them to pop. And also I want to force myself to keep up with the values when I put in more layers next to this. So The cheeks look pretty intense right now but there's also the thing where they would dry lighter and you can see right here after they did that they aren't really as intense as before. That's why I would go over those with more layers later. Mm -hmm. 
And when it came to painting her shirt, which I think is very dynamic in the photo, before really drafting out the shapes of them and making a clear line work for them, what I really did was just add some of these very, I think what I would say was the cooler shades of red amongst the orangey ones. I wanted these colors to pop out from the other warmer colors of her face. And I just wanted it to look like her shirt would have this more vivid color when compared to everything else in the photo. So when we're going back to her face, I'm actually working with a more neutral color this time and it's very dark. And it's intentionally very dark because I wanted it to shape out what was already an intense color payoff for the first layer. And so you can see that the shadows, once they're starting to shape out her face, just really adds that intense look to the expression, which I just love so much about the photo. And I would just add in these vibrant parts of colors towards the tail end of these <laughs> more neutral, darker ones, just so there is still a little bit of variation within the same shadow while I'm painting. This is one of the more fascinating things about watercolors is that I don't think I'd be able to do this same kind of effect with a different medium. So you can see these are very dark colors I'm layering for her eyes. So I really wanted her, especially that right one, to look very deep. And I don't think I could have achieved that with a more opaque medium. It's just something that I love to do with watercolors. So while I'm waiting for everything else to dry, what I'm now going to do is start to add my second layers to the background. And this is when I really want to start separating it from the colors on her. So even though they had the first colors laid down on them initially, instead of going with more warm layers on top of the background for this, I'm starting with, I'm layering it on with very cool greens. And I love how you can really see how different that green would have looked like if it was just by itself in the background. So you can see the color on the paper versus the color on the palette. The one on the palette is very cool, but it also doesn't have that almost glowing effect that the one on the paper had, which I just really like that effect. And then when we're moving on to her hair, for this I think I used a little bit of a more neutral brown, so I think this is burnt sienna, but also that too, you can see how much different it looks from the background, just looks nice and warm, which I also really love, especially next to those greens. But yeah, you can just really see how much colors differ just from how you apply it onto your painting. Usually I would like to mix my colors in on my palette and not on the paper like this. I do a lot of mixing within the same shadow, like for the shadows right here on her eyes, I would start with a more neutral brown and then slowly start to add in a very bright red. But lately I haven't done much of layering different colors on top of each other and especially because I've been working so much with gouache I just feel like it's that technique that I miss and yeah I can't wait to explore more of it again so I think because of how thinly I add in my layers when I actually go to edit my videos they don't do that much impact after they're dry so <laughs> that's why it's always easier to do these vid videos on YouTube than on Patreon because a lot of it is just adjusting to the values that I wanted initially and just because watercolor dries lighter, there's a lot of the process that I have to repeat. But actually for her hair, I think this might be the last layer of what I would call the underpainting. I know there's been so many layers up to this point, but this is actually still just what I would consider in my head to be the underpainting, the darkest ones that I'm adding later is what I would actually want her hair color to look like. You can just see those layers, especially right at the center of her head where she parts her hair. You can just see those layers 
really adding to that effect but yeah for most of her hair I actually want it to be a lot darker than before So when I'm going back to the background again, since I really wanted there to be a separation between her hair and the background, I wanted it to look very dark, but also since her hair is also dark, that's why for these later layers in the background, I actually used a very cool blue on top of the colors that I had before. And again, you can see just how different that color looks on the paper versus the mixing palette. And I just really, really like that. You can also see how different that color looks on plain paper right here when I'm painting these shadows on the folds of her shirt. And I just really think that's fascinating because it's the kind of effect that I wouldn't normally get to see in one painting. So now what I'm painting for her hair is what I would consider to be her actual hair color. And towards the edges, I added in some black for it, but most of these colors right now are actually paints gray. Right towards the center, there's also some warmer colors, so her hair would really look like the sun is hitting that part of her hair. I also just really like that effect too. Some very sneaky, cool pops of blue in here that I just wanted to add to her eyes because there are some of those pops of blue on her shirt. Because after I've added in all those layers to the background and to her face, right now what I'm doing is adding the final touches of shadow to her face before I move on to the prints of her shirt. And since I've always had a hard time painting florals, I think they're easier to do with gouache because most of the time I just follow their actual shape. With watercolors, I inclined to experiment more and so what I actually did for this one was add more shape to the leaves instead of the flowers. So the leaves I've made darker than the flowers and also when I go to shape these out, I would add more detail to the leaves than the petals themselves. Now that I'm looking at it though, I really like it. When I first painted this for Patreon, I wasn't so sure about the look on her shirt, but I think it's starting to grow on me. But yeah, for the final details of the background, what I'm gonna do now is take a pure black to sort of just ornament the background. What was more important is that I wanted the silhouettes to grow around her and to look like they're embracing her. I just really needed them to complete the picture before I go back into her shirt and finish that off too. But yeah, after that, I'll be done with the painting. It feels like I've been taking a break from YouTube. Um, I'll be busy for the next couple of months. I won't be taking a break from uploading. I have a few stuff that I've painted. I also can't wait to paint Halle Bailey as the Little Mermaid. So thank you guys for suggesting that. After I'm done with my side projects, which I also can't wait to announce to you guys, but after I'm done with everything I'm working on right now, I will be redoing some of my tutorials just because they're my most viewed videos and some of them I'm just not satisfied with. So that is it for this one and also a little channel update for you guys. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Thank you to my patrons for supporting me and I will be seeing you guys again soon.